Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Kabir Considers. In this video we're going to react to wrestlers who try to warn us about Vince McMahon. So most people are aware, anyway, people who are sort of like fans of wrestling, Vince McMahon is going through a massive amount of lawsuits. Um, he's left the company, Triple H is now running things, uh, you know, SA allegations harassment sort of stuff it's not looking good for Vince and apparently people were you know ringing the bell a long time ago like trying to let us know but a man who so powerful like controlled basically professional wrestling he was probably able to silence them quite quickly so it's going to be interesting to see who who voiced concerns she says that Vince McMahon knew about it and that WWE functionally covered it up to protect the business welcome to watch mojo and wow, today we're looking at like professional now? wrestlers who spoke out against oh. former WWE chairman and CEO Vince McMahon prior to his recent criminal allegations and I'm not worried about Vince's feelings he's never cared about mine I don't have any problem with everybody kicking his head around the parking lot whoa China the late Joan Marie Laurer, better known to wrestling fans as China, had a tumultuous relationship with the WWE, and Vince McMahon in particular. Following her dismissal from the company in 2001, China blasted her former place of employment in various media interviews. A Jerry's Deli eating lunch and a fax mysteriously went to Jerry's Deli and it was from the WWE and they said they wouldn't be needing me anymore. The ninth wonder of the world claimed that she was blacklisted by McMahon following her breakup with Paul Triple H Levesque, who was carrying on a relationship with Stephanie McMahon, Vince's daughter at the time of her exit. Nobody, whether you're a celebrity or whether you're not, likes to be cheated on, especially when it's with the boss's daughter. She also alleged that Vince had an iron grip on talent relationships, both inside and outside of the ring revealing his power to force individuals into uncomfortable and problematic storylines. I've definitely seen pressure of losing weight, getting implants, wow, taking steroids. I've seen that way too many times. CM Punk. I mean, this is the thing. When you've got one person, one company that just dominates the space, there's going to be sort of misbehavior there. Of course, they're going to take advantage. It turns out CM Punk's infamous pipe bomb promo in 2011 was more than just a scripted rant. I have a lot of things I want to get off my chest. It contained real criticisms of his then boss Vince McMahon and WWE's corporate culture as a whole. Oh. Leaving the company in 2014, Punk went further in a tell-all podcast with former friend Colt Cabana. He described McMahon's erratic behavior and negligent approach to wrestlers' health. He claimed Vince and others pressured him to perform while injured and ignored serious medical issues. Sable. Valet turned wrestler Sable became a breakout star in the WWE's Attitude Era. However, she would go on to engage in a legal battle with Vince McMahon and the WWE in 1999. The World Wrestling Federation that I signed up to be a part of is not. Wasn't she with Brock Lesnar? I think she, I think they were married. Not the World Wrestling Federation that I left. She sued the company for over a hundred million dollars, citing sexual harassment and unsafe working conditions. Merrill also claimed in the just settled lawsuit that the WWF wanted her to partake in a lesbian storyline, and other wrestlers threatened to disfigure her face. Sable what? alleged that McMahon pressured her to participate in sexually explicit storylines against her will. She also claimed that Vince fostered a hostile work environment where female wrestlers were routinely objectified and harassed. The lawsuit was settled out of court, and the star returned to the company in 2003, where she was curiously placed in a romantic storyline with her boss, Vince McMahon. Ooh, yeah, have a little taste, huh? Oh my god, he's such a creep, isn't he? <laughs> Jesse Ventura. Jesse the Body Ventura is notable for being one of the first wrestlers to challenge McMahon's dubious practices publicly. In the mid 1980s, Ventura attempted to unionize wrestlers due to what he felt were unfair working conditions and lack of benefits. There was definitely a need for a union in wrestling. That's what Jesse Ventura was trying to do. With Jesse later learning, it was Hulk Hogan who, quote, ratted out his plans to Vince. However, wow. Ventura would go on to successfully sue McMahon for unpaid royalties, winning a significant settlement. He's making money off it and not paying me a thing for all that he's making. So we went to court. In numerous interviews since then, the former governor of Minnesota has criticized McMahon's monopolistic control over the industry and his exploitative treatment of talent in general. Chris, always remember one thing. I beat Vince McMahon in court. 
Paul London. Yeah, this is why you can't have monopolies, man. This is why, you know, organizations like the Federal Trade Commission, the CMA, you know, exist to break up these things. And Brian Kendrick! These guys are a great team. Paul London provided a critique of Vince McMahon in his post-WWE career. London went on to describe McMahon as someone who manipulated wrestlers both emotionally and professionally. He recounted instances of McMahon's now infamous erratic behavior, including sudden mood swings and arbitrary decision-making. London also alleged that McMahon fostered a culture of fear and sycophancy among WWE staff. The wrestler's candid revelations provided a rare glimpse into the day-to-day -day reality of working under McMahon's leadership at the time. In later years, London recounted uncomfortable instances where his then-girlfriend, Ashley Massaro, was seemingly distraught over being harassed by Vince. Right. But I do remember specifically many times when she would, she would be crying to me because Vince was propositioning her to, to fly on the jet with them. Like Ronda Rousey. Despite Man, Vince. I mean, he's done great things for wrestling, no doubt. Like, he's, WWE is a massive, massive organization. Massive. But yeah, he's he's clearly got some uh, deep-seated, you know, personality problems. Despite her relatively short tenure in WWE, Ronda Rousey made a sizable impact in the land of sports entertainment. Locked in, bliss taps, Rousey wins. The ex UFC women's bantamweight champion hasn't held back in her criticism of Vince McMahon and the company culture, though. Rousey has hinted at her frustration with McMahon's creative control on social media, later expanding on these comments by suggesting that Vince's vision for women's wrestling was outdated and limiting. Instead of like enabling us to have a great match, we were like fighting against him in order to have a great match. In her book, Our Fight, Rousey further delivered a scathing critique of her former boss, questioning where his on screen villainy ends and his real life unethical behavior begins. She also condemned WWE's past exploitation of women, particularly the company's numerous bra and panties matches. But Vince being gone really changes things a lot. I do love Triple H. I love Steph. Alberto Del Rio, the first Mexican-born world champion in WWE. Uh, to be honest, I've heard that uh, because Vince is now gone, that the storylines are better. Like anyone that watches WWE like a lot right now, let me know. Have things improved since Vince has gone, like in terms of the storyline? The, the characters and all that stuff. W.E. history. Alberto Del Rio's relationship with the company and McMahon in general soured dramatically after his first release from the company in 2014. In subsequent interviews, Del Rio accused his former boss of fostering a racist environment within the WWE. He claims that McMahon allowed and even encouraged racial stereotypes, be it in character development or storylines. Del Rio also alleged that McMahon protected certain employees who made racially offensive comments outside of the ring. I'm not going to let anyone bully me around, especially uh, th this is a problem that, that we're living right now. In the world that we live right now is the athletes, the big guys being bullied. Del Rio's own behavior has since been Whoa. called into question, however, and he has gone Whoa. on to show empathy for Vince McMahon during his current issues. Bruno Sammartino sold out Madison Square Garden 187 times. One of professional wrestling's biggest stars, Bruno Sammartino became one of Vince McMahon's most vocal critics. After departing in 1988, Sammartino, who once held the world championship for seven straight years, spent years speaking out against Vince's direction of the company. He was not shy about accusing Vince of promoting steroid use. Let me tell you, Larry, if you can keep this guy to shut his face because he doesn't want me to talk, I was there still with the WWF when the head was there. They used to line up a long line. We when was that? Everybody oh, of the goodies. And they thought, and then a solid came, but even when they became illegal, McMahon here, large shipment. He also called out the company's salacious storylines during the Attitude Era. However, Bruno accepted an invitation into the WWE Hall of Fame in 2013. Please welcome the great Bruno Sammartino. Wow, interesting how they came full circle. I wonder what happened. Why? What made him, you know, sort of change his attitude with Vince? Stating he was satisfied with the way the company had addressed his concerns about drug use and vulgarity. Bret Hart. Real life feuds with Vince McMahon don't get more legendary than the one between Vince and Bret the Hitman Hart. Hart's falling out with McMahon following the infamous Montreal screw job in 1997 led to years of public criticism. I can feel it. Like everything is coming to me now. It's like 
They did it. They did screw you. Hart accused McMahon of breaking promises and manipulating talent for personal gain, ultimately labeling him as a man who will prioritize business over any human being. Couldn't have given a man more than what I gave Vince McMahon. None of that meant anything. In his autobiography and in numerous media interviews, Hart further detailed McMahon's ruthless tactics and questionable moral character. Brett has since spoken out following Janelle Grant's damning accusations against Vince. Mate, I can't get over how different. I mean, obviously he's older, but like what's with the dye, the hair dye and everything? It's Making like... it known that he has, quote, zero respect for McMahon. And I came right up between Vince's arms and it was like, um, you know, when you hit the bell and the thing goes up. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Ashley Massaro Following her tragic passing in 2019, it was revealed that WWE star Ashley Massaro tried to warn the world of Vince McMahon's unlawful acts. A previously unreleased affidavit by Massaro alleged that McMahon uncomfortably pursued her after her Playboy cover release, even attempting to isolate her in his hotel room. After the Whoa. Janelle Grant allegations, Ashley Massaro's attorney released a previously unreleased statement from Massaro that claimed that Vince McMahon made sexual advances on her, that Vince was well known for this sort of thing. After she says she rejected his advances, Massaro claimed McMahon sabotaged her WWE career by writing damaging promos. From her point of view, Vince responded by writing stories whose sole purpose was to just embarrass her. Wow. You girls cry now. Wow. So basically just bully and humiliate her on live TV. Massaro's affidavit, which was only made public in 2024, also included disturbing accusations that WWE officials, including McMahon himself, were aware of her being violated during a 2006 tour of Kuwait, but instructed her to remain silent on the matter. She accused WWE of not responding seriously to her allegations when she told them. She says that Vince McMahon knew about it and that WWE functionally covered it up to protect the business. Do you recall any other wrestlers calling out Vince McMahon prior to Ugh. his current legal plights? Share their warnings in the comments below. This is one of the most brazen examples in a company setting that I've seen where an executive isn't really taking a lot of steps to hide the behavior. He, yeah, I mean, he clearly doesn't give a damn. And this is what happens when uh, a, a sociopath is given a billion dollars and complete control over an organization that hires, you know, people like as, as the talent, you know, Vince. I mean, this is the thing. They say absolute power corrupts. Absolutely. So if I was given a billion dollars, I don't know, like, I don't think I would end up like Vince for sure. But that kind of money and power definitely would change you as an individual. But yeah, he definitely had this in him. And I just feel bad for the people, you know, the victims of this because he, like, this has probably been going on for decades, like since the 80s, potentially. Like, God knows how many people he's taken advantage of. But yeah, he's, he's done anyway. He's finished. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoy my videos, please help me out by liking and subscribing.